Good morning, friends, and I hope you're well. A question for you for this January 4th. Are you handling your money the way that God wants you to? I ask that question because in Luke chapter 1 and verse 53 in the Song of Mary, she says something interesting. She says, remember from yesterday, that God is going to fill the hungry with good things. But in that same verse, she says, he sent the rich away empty-handed. What does that mean? Why does God inspire Mary to say that? How does it relate to Jesus? First, an anecdote. I know a man who was fabulously successful in his business. And then one time in a contest, he also won a Cadillac, brand new one. He already had a good Cadillac. So here's what he did with the good Cadillac he was driving when he won the new one. He took it down to the church and he found a youth pastor. Now the youth pastor, like a lot of youth pastors, drove a car that was basically held together by duct tape. And so he walked into the youth pastor's office and said, I've got something for you. And he gave him the keys to the nearly new Cadillac he had been driving. It was the fanciest car in the church parking lot for quite a while. He was handling his money the way God wanted. So why does Mary say he sent the rich away empty-handed? Well, when you read through the Gospel of Luke, you find some interesting things. On the one hand, in Luke chapter 8, wealth can be something that chokes the Word of God in our lives. It can choke spiritual fruit. Then, later on in Luke chapter 12, there's a man who builds bigger barns, relaxes, but it says this night his soul is required of him. Wealth not only can choke the work of God in our lives, it can distract us from our future meeting with God. Then in Luke chapter 16, wealth is called mammon, a God alternative to the true God, a false God. Then also in Luke chapter 16, it says the Pharisees were lovers of money. The Bible says we're supposed to be lovers of God. They were lovers of money. And then again, in Luke chapter 16, there's a rich man that is wearing purple and feasting. He doesn't even see the beggar Lazarus at the gate. His wealth had blinded him. The message is this. Sometimes wealth can blind or choke spiritual life. Sometimes wealth can be a false god driving us away from the true God. Sometimes wealth can take our love. In Mary's village, her family probably, and most of the families would earn about a denarii a day, maybe 200 denarii a year, if things were working out. That's not much. In Herod's palace, he gives one of his sons, Antipater, an allowance of about 50 pounds a year. That's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times as much, though it's hard to calculate exactly how much a pound was. Herod would give the emperor 300 pounds at one time as a gift, and they would give get gifts back and forth. No, Luke is reminding us of this through God's inspiring Mary's song. Handle your money the way God would want you to. For as the Lord Jesus would say, where your treasure is, there would your heart be also. Let's have our treasure be in our wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is January 4th. God bless you. Seek first the kingdom of God. Read your Bible and pray every day. Seek to bring people to the Savior. And let's continue to ponder step by step by step the way of the Lord as revealed in this wonderful Gospel of Luke. God bless you as you serve him today.